In this video, we will talk about positive and negative numbers. Now let's think back to the good old days when you first learned how to count. All right, so when you learn how to count, we started with one, and then you had two, and then three, and four, five, etc. right? So back when you were first learning, that's what we did. And then later on, you learned that we have a number smaller than one, the number is the number zero. Now in this lesson, we're gonna talk about numbers that are smaller than zero. All right, and those are called negative numbers. So after zero, or I guess before zero, we would have a negative one, we'd have a negative two, and a negative three, and etc. Now what we can do is we can put these numbers on what is called a number line. All right, so we see here, zero is in the center. And on the right side, we have our numbers, one, two, three, four, etc. Notice the arrow right here. The arrow means it's gonna keep going on forever in that direction. All right, so the further to the right we go, the larger the numbers become. And then we see here, on the left side of zero, we have what we call negative numbers. These are smaller than zero. So we have negative one and negative two, negative three, negative four, and etc. So the further to the left we go on the number line, the smaller the numbers become. All right, so negative numbers by definition are numbers that are less than zero. And as we stated, they will decrease in value as you move further to the left. Meaning if we keep going further and further to the left, the numbers keep getting smaller and smaller and smaller. And then positive numbers would be numbers that are greater than zero, and they increase in value as you move further to the right. So we're gonna get some practice with the number line for a moment. What we're going to do is we're going to try to determine the missing number. And you're welcome to try this uh, before I give you the answer. So you can pause the video if you need to. So here, we're gonna to try to figure out the value of this green dot, this point right here. All right, so what is the value of this point? All right, well you see here we have zero, one, two, three, four. This must be five. That's a number after four and before six. So that number must be five. All right, so let's try another one. Here we're working with a negative number. All right, so what number would this be right here? Well, notice the pattern. All right, it's negative one, negative two, negative three, negative four, negative five, negative six. So we're counting by making them negative numbers, and this would be negative seven to keep the pattern going. Let's try another one. Here we're trying to find the value of this point right here. So again, it's on the negative side. So look at the pattern, we have zero, and then negative one, and then after one comes two, but this is negative, so it's gonna be a negative two. All right, so that number would be negative two. All right, so negatives and positive numbers, those are opposites of each other. All right, so we can find the opposite simply by switching the sign. So if we were to tell you to find the opposite of the number four, what you do is you change the sign, and the opposite would be a negative four. And the opposite of negative six would now be a positive six. And by the way, it's worth noting that for the positive numbers, we don't need to put a positive sign with it. It's an assumed positive number, all right? So if there's no sign written with it, we just assume that it's positive. So the negatives, you need to put the negative sign in front, but the positives you do not. Now what is the opposite of negative 10? All right, just change the sign. So change it from negative to positive. So this becomes a positive 10. Now what about zero? Well, zero is neither positive or negative. All right, zero is neutral. So the opposite of zero would just be zero. All right, it's its own opposite. All right, so make sure you understand the idea of 
positive and negatives being opposites of each other. Now, where would we see negative numbers in real life? Well, there's different areas, and we'll talk about those in a moment. And as we, as we talk about those different areas where you might see negative numbers, uh, a few key words to hone in on as we begin that discussion. So for positive numbers, some key words would be things like above, or increase, all right, or profit, things that are bigger, all right, things that are getting bigger or higher or taller would be positive. Whereas negative numbers, some key words would be below, or decrease, or a loss, or speaking of money, it would be debt. That would be you have less than zero dollars, right? You owe people some money. All right, so these are key words to make sure you understand. So when we deal with the application, if we're told to determine the best number that represents the situation of 400 feet above sea level, all right, we see the keyword above. So above would be positive. It's a positive number. So we can represent that statement with the number 400. Next example, we have the fifth floor underground. So it's not really stated as we saw in the previous slide, but here we see underground. We could replace that with beneath the ground or under the ground or below the ground. So we can replace the word underground with one of those words and we can tell that it's gonna be a negative number. And so this can be represented by the number negative five. Another example would be in golf. Here we have three strokes above par. Now, um, we're assuming you understand golf terminology, um, but even if you don't, you can still figure out the answer to this math question because above Okay, above is going to be a positive, a positive word. So this number can be represented by the number three, a positive three. All right, another example here we have is a thousand dollars debt. So debt is money that you owe somebody. So it's worse or less than zero, right? So you you owe people money. You don't have any money, but you actually owe someone. It's beneath zero. All right, so this is a negative number. So this would be represented by the number negative 1,000. All right, so these are just a few examples. Uh, we have, you know, height, we have sports, we have uh, business or with money. All right, those are just a few examples of where we see positive or negative numbers. And there's all sorts of different applications of positive and negative. All right, these are just a few, and we've talked about a few key words that can help you interpret in other types of situations as well. And this concludes our lesson for today. We will see you next time.